the FiberSeeker 3 release is a bigger deal than any of you might realize. Why? Because it makes that kind of technology accessible to the vast majority. So what kind of technology am I talking about? I'm talking about a thing called continuous fiber reinforcement or printing. Now, what do I mean when I say continuous fiber reinforcement or CFF? I'll show you. Let's start with chop fibers. In your filament, let's say this is a piece of raw filament, your chop fibers exist as little pieces of whether that be carbon fiber, glass fiber, whatever. Even though we can assume in a part printed with chop fibers that a majority of these chop pieces follow the direction of the toolpath, printing 10 of these might give you slightly variable performance between each, making 3D printed parts like this not only harder to predict, but not really leveraging that fiber reinforcement. Continuous fiber is exactly what the name suggests. Instead of chop fibers, you have long fibers that can fill out a whole layer and follow the toolpath. So let's say, for example, I'm building a ring like this. With chop fibers, when I print this ring, they will exist following the tool path. Continuous fibers, I can actually reinforce the long strands of this carbon fiber or glass fiber following the exact geometry of the layer. That way, when I pull this, like one of the Fiber Seeker demos, I have the strength of the filament and the strength of the fiber that's working together to make this a strong part. What we currently see a lot in the 3D printing space are the chopped fiber reinforced filaments with continuous fiber and they're not chopped. That's really the best way to explain it. Currently, the only technology that really exists on the market for continuous fiber reinforcement is the Mark Forge series, particularly their X7. This printer retails new for about $69, almost $70,000. That's not including filament and not including the Iger Slicer package. So... In comparison to this Fiber Seeker 3 machine, which claims to be able to do the exact same thing as this one in terms of print capabilities, but at a fraction of the cost, and hopefully, you know, allowing not only this technology to be accessible, but also open source. Okay, so Mark Forge calls this CFF or continuous fiber fabrication, whereas the Fiber Seeker 3 company calls this composite fiber co-extrusion or CFC. They claim the technologies are different, the premise is similar, although there is a small difference. So with the Mark Forge, the fiber inlays, the continuous fiber inlays, 
come already coated with a polymer that makes them more flexible when they're being pushed through the Bowden tube and extruded and also act as a bonding agent when melted into the part. While both printers leverage this two nozzle system, one for the base plastic and one for the fiber inlays, the Fiber Seeker 3 process is slightly different. It starts with the fiber on a spool not coated in anything and their custom extruder actually coats the fiber in a plastic as it's being printed. In this heated chamber, a 1.75 millimeter line of filament is pushed in, bringing it to temperature while the continuous fiber is brought from above, pops down below into the heated chamber where it's combined with the plastic and turned into a coated fiber that the printer smushes into the print using a wide 0.7 millimeter nozzle. Now, I've used this machine a few times for building tensile samples, also servicing and creating that video tutorial you've seen on my channel, but I have a few gripes about this thing. Main one being the touch screen. My bamboo has a better touch screen than this machine. I hate to say it, but there is a significant lag between my finger press and the screen's response to the point where it almost sometimes double clicks. We have another machine like this on campus. It's not the industrial CFF one, but the upstairs machine had to get its screen replaced. I should not be paying 70K for a machine to have the screen replaced so that it works properly. When it comes to that machine I just showed, we have the proprietary filament that it needs to print with, the Onyx brand material. While it is an amazing material that prints successfully time and time again, makes support removal a dream, it can be expensive, hard to source, list goes on and on. And there are some off-brand filaments that are compatible with the machine, but when it comes to maintenance or service of the printer, you know, the company will ask you if you've been using the proper materials and may or may not decline maintenance or service if you have not been. Nice thing about the proprietary filaments, though, is that it's almost guaranteed the actual spool is dried properly once you remove it from the packaging. With our consumer-grade filaments, it's not always the case. Another key difference between this industrial grade CFF machine and the Fiber Seeker 3 is that the Fiber Seeker 3 actually has a heated bed. This thing does not. Having a heated bed is wonderful, not only for the versatility of the kind of materials you can print with, but also it can double as a filament dehydrator or dryer. Unfortunately, that one cannot. We actually had to buy a food dehydrator for our lab to use as a filament dryer. Editing Dora here, I'd also like to add that the Fiber Seeker 3 not only has a heated bed, but also has a heated chamber. In comparison to the Mark Forge X7 system, it does not. So that is an improvement for printing our nylons, ABSs, ASAs, etc. materials that tend to warp off of the build plate. With the Fiber Seeker 3 system, it's open to more of that variety of filaments, whereas the Mark Forge, even though it doesn't have heated internals, prints successfully their onyx materials that include chopped carbon fibers. Two more things I'd like to mention kind of gripes with this system. First being the camera. There is a camera in this printer up here to which you're able to remote monitor your print, but the lighting in the printer itself is so bad that you can barely see through the camera. The person who came to help us install this machine and give us the proper training had literally instructed us to add light bars in the printer if we plan to use the camera. Yeah. Another thing that slightly bothers me about this system is the enclosure. So the fact that we're printing not only onyx, which is a chopped fiber reinforced filament, but also continuous fibers in this enclosure is not properly sealed and has no filtration. There's even this small finger hole at the bottom concerns me. And so that is an improvement that I quite enjoy with the Fiber Seeker 3. It's a properly sealed machine and I'm hoping there's also a filter in there. So in terms of, of safety with printing fiber materials, the consumer hobbyist grade system is arguably better. CFF is actually wonderful from a safety perspective too. On my channel, I posted a video about chopped carbon fiber filaments and how not only do those fibers rub off on your skin, but can become airborne when you print. 
CFF allows you to use a base material that isn't fiber filled, print with reinforcement fibers, and still get a strong final part. When you don't use a chop reinforced filament on the surface, you won't have any of those fibers rub off on your fingers while you handle the part or the filament, and no chop fibers exist in the air while you print. Considering the price that the Fiber Seeker 3 is being marketed at, for sure it's still kind of an expensive machine for the regular hobbyist, but if you're a business owner or an institution, it makes a lot more sense paying around six thousand dollars for something that can create stronger parts for your applications rather than dropping 70k for a proprietary machine that limits your creativity with non-open source hardware and materials and that's why this fiber seeker 3 release is so exciting because as an industry, 3D printing and all this high-level technology is becoming more and more accessible for people like us, researchers, small businesses, first robotics teams. I've had positive experiences with this machine, especially with the support removal. But the slicer makes it very hard to be creative with process parameters or really push the limits of 3D printing in a way that an open source slicer like Orca Slicer would allow us to do. Think about just being able to choose orientation, select raster angles, select the walls, etc. You don't really have the wonderful world of modifiers, multi-material prints, etc. with the slicer software of that machine. Another thing that I find very limiting about the Mark Forged Iver software is that the output file is an encrypted file type. It's not like I can open it and read the G-code like on my Prusa or my Bamboo Lab. And from a hobbyist and research perspective, that really limits what I can do with my printer. What if I want to try and print multi-axis somehow on my machine or braid in some continuous fibers? On the X7, that's absolutely impossible due to the fact that I can't upload custom G-code. Obviously, at a CK price point, the last thing Mark Forge would want is for people to be breaking their expensive systems to the point where they can blame the company. But if you think about the Fiber Seeker 3, one thing I would really like to see would be the open source nature of their slicer. compatibility with other slicers, maybe like Orca Bamboo Prusa slicers, even Cura. I would also like to see that custom G-codes can be made and run on the Fiber Seeker 3 as well, just to really open the horizons as to what can be done with this now more accessible CFF system. From the perspective of my research lab, had the Seeker 3 existed before this purchase, maybe we would have been more open to, to that system, being able to perform research Research on applications of continuous carbon fiber parts while saving money that could be used on other equipment or for paying researchers. While the machine is still a Kickstarter ad, I hope it's the case where actual production units that are being sold to people like us are of the same quality and value, but only time will tell. If you're watching and you know somebody who has access to a Fiber Seeker 3, let me know because I would love to do some torture tests comparing it to the Mark Forge X7, the industrial CFF competitor. Depending on the argument, you may or may not call the Bamboo Lab systems open source, but people have been able to hack their firmware, understand how the AMS works, how to talk to it, and run custom G-code. As soon as the Fiber Seeker 3 hits the main market, I really do think that will happen in our 3D printing space, where people will be start learning how the firmware works on that machine, making custom things possible. Whether that be custom materials and profiles, add-ons, things like that. It would be wonderful to see the Fiber Seeker 3 being leveraged in multi-material applications.
where you can have the fiber reinforcement and maybe the flex of a TPU. As somebody who in the future would like to have a project car, this machine seems like an awesome tool to be in my arsenal for repair projects related to that. I'd expect too with CFF coming to the consumer or hobbyist market that more material companies, me Bamboo Lab, Polymaker, etc., will start producing filaments that could work on that system. The goal of this video isn't to talk negatively on the Mark Forge X7 system. For a while, it was really the only ecosystem that allowed continuous fibers within a part. And without that system and all the gaps that it created in the technology, the Fiber Seeker 3 may have have taken a lot longer to be idealized. There are a lot of things that Mark Forge does well and maybe some not so much that need improvement and while CFF is now possible for consumers and a larger market, maybe the system is also a nod for Mark Forge to improve or close some of its current gaps. Takeaway from this video should be that the 3D printing space is so much better when companies work together to bring ideas to life or at least inspire other companies to fill the gaps and make the technology not only more accessible but a better user experience. Let me know your thoughts on this Fiber Seeker system. Would you buy one? Use one? I know I would. 